Yeah, and they told me another one this morning because I was telling him about the topic we were going to cover today on, on the podcast. And he's like, dude, he's like, last night, he's like, I went out to feed my dogs. He's by 8 o'clock at night. You know how I know the sun, the sun goes down pretty early, so it gets dark pretty early. He said 8 o'clock, he said he went out to go feed his dogs, and he just heard like a little girl like, running around laughing and, and talking. Shit. And he's like, fuck. I was like, did you say anything when you went back inside? Fuck that. He's all, fuck, no. I just pretend like it never happened and didn't say anything. He's like, I just, he's like, kept it to myself. I was like, man, fuck Damn. that shit. Yeah, well, speaking of all this, I think right now would be a great segue to reach out to our buddy, Haunted Mario. So, little background information on Haunted Mario. He is into investigating BDSM. investigating uh, paranormal activity. So, he goes to different sites known where people have reported seeing stuff like this or having some type of experience with something, you know in that realm something beyond our comprehension and whatnot okay. so he goes to like different sites throughout the country with like cameras and like night vision goggles Fuck like that. he's gone on like <laughs> world war ii battleships that supposedly like have like all this like go- all these ghosts and stuff of like soldiers uh, and shit anyway uh we're gonna try and reach out to how him how big are his balls i wouldn't be able to do that shit I, uh, i'd be scared you can <laughs> ask him but yeah. the main Please thing we the, the that. main thing that we want to reach out to him is just how did he got into it and what's the what's the type of stuff that he's seen, and then what sites does he recommend or has he heard of around our area that are have some stuff going on? Yeah, does he know we're giving him a call? Yeah. yeah. Okay. After that, I have one more story that's similar kind of to my buddy went told me about uh, moving into a haunted house and hearing and seeing things that another person wrote in. So let's try to give him. A, we can give him a call now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me. Let's try and get him on the phone and see what his stories are like. In any case, yeah. I mean, I feel like, ironically, the concept of Halloween is very, you know, Anglo-Saxon. But mm-hmm. the spiritual world, you know, is definitely more other cultures. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what, what Mario can tell us. Oh, so can we say his name, but too late? No, no, he, he's okay with it. Okay. Hey Mario, how's it going? It's Andres. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Mario? Hello? Mario? Oh, you can't hear us. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Oh, great. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay, perfect. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for taking the time out of your day to talk with us. So, we do a podcast where we just talk about random topics and whatnot. Usually just try and make people laugh. But, we decided to talk about kind of more of the paranormal stuff that goes on considering the the time of the year and i was remembering what we were talking about that one time i was wondering if you'd be down to share some of your experiences that you know some of the creepy stuff that you dealt with how you got into it and maybe some sites up in the bay area or at least norcal that people might go check out and whatnot yeah definitely um so, so tell us about yourself. How'd you, how'd you get? Yeah, how'd you get into it? Like, just real quick. Hey Mario, how's it going? It's Denny. Um, you can you can hear us very well, right? Yes. Okay. Cool. Perfect. Yeah. Um, well, my wife and I actually got into the whole paranormal thing about four years ago. Um, it started out with an interest in watching the shows on TV, um, out of sheer entertainment, and. Uh, we had an opportunity to actually go to a, a real ghost hunt, so it was something we always wanted to try. We went and we bought um, a couple of audio recorders and joined in on a ghost hunt to see what what it was all about. Nice. And uh, since that night, we experienced uh, just about every type of paranormal activity you can think of. With the exception of um, possession and uh, altergeist uh, activity. So you're, you're but, a very uh, pious person, I'm assuming. Or you go to church every Sunday? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame you there, man. Anyway, well, that's what. So what kind of stuff, man? Like, could you explain maybe like the most eerie or that the first? The first moment that you had an experience where, like, holy crap, there's something, you know, out there. There's something beyond what, you know, what we can see or, or feel. 
Yeah. Um, so this is actually very early on into our investigation uh, adventures. We we went to a place called the uh, Harry Square Museum. It's in Los Angeles. What was the name of the museum? Uh, Sorry. Heritage Square. Okay. And uh, basically, it's a collection of old Victorian homes from way back in the 1800s and 19, uh, early 1900s. Um, and uh, it was with a group that uh, we actually belong to now called Haunted Orange County, and they did a paranormal investigation event, and we got to investigate four of the Victorian homes. Um, and by and investigation, were, what do you mean, Mario? Uh, ghost hunt. Okay. So you go out there and you're trying to collect some, like, hard evidence footage of something going on there. Yeah, paranormal activity. Okay. Well, we went into the house called the uh, Octagon House. And it was uh, the first time that we had experienced something called disembodied voices. And what that is is potential spirit voices communicating with you that you can audibly hear with your ears without the use of the report. That sounds pleasant. Damn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we, were, we were in this octagon house, and there's a stairway that leads up to the second floor, and it's located in the center of the house. And so we were all congregated at the base of the stairway. And as we're doing this VP session, um, we try to pick up electro electronic voice phenomenon. We heard what sounded very, uh, through various times, we could hear a little girl singing, talking, or laughing. And uh, what was spectacular about it is that there were no children on the premises. And this was probably 11 at night. And with only adults in that house, hearing a little girl's voice come out of the darkness out of nowhere, that was probably the first official time where we were like, okay, the paranormal is very real. And so since then, how, tingling to how, many, the least. how many times have you gone out and done these ghost hunts? What are the types of places that, you know, these adventures have taken you? And uh, are you able to sleep at night? Like, does this yes, shit follow you home? <laughs> yeah. yeah, does it, like, bother well, you at night, sleeping-wise? Yeah, I can definitely sleep at night. Uh, it's something you get used to early on. Um, it's not as scary as the shows on TV depicted to me. Um, if you're really into it, it's fun, but if you're not into it, it's actually quite boring. <laughs> Quick question. Um, at first, at, at first, was it hard to get used to? Like, when you first started doing it, was it kind of like, you know, like a mind trip where you kind of like tripped out, just trying to get used to what, what you were experiencing firsthand? And then as, as yeah. you went, you just got used to it little by little? Yeah, it was... Um, Otherworldly, to, to put it easily, um, we didn't really know what to expect in the beginning. So as we did these investigations, it became more um, evident that what we were experiencing, experiencing was actually paranormal. But it, it got a little difficult to get used to in the beginning, at least for the first year. How long have you been doing this? Four years now. Damn. And, and so, like now, uh huh? Yeah, now we've been across the country. Oh wow! And like, what's been the most gnarly stuff? Because I don't know, I'd be afraid to go like to the south, you know, <laughs> uh, or anywhere near like an Indian, a Native American reservation where yeah. like messed up shit went down, or like Salem. Uh, what's been like the most trippiest place, or like the the place with the highest volume, I guess of a paranormal activity well uh the two top places that come to mind are actually on opposite sides of the u.s um the first one i'll talk about later because you were mentioning places up near northern california that mm -hmm. are haunted 
but uh, the one that we recently visited was a Waverly Sanatorium. Oh, damn. And this is one of the most haunted places in the world. Um, it's the site of a sanatorium that housed tuberculosis patients back in the early 1900s. Um, thousands upon thousands of people died from tuberculosis there, and it is by far the most haunted place we've ever been to. Dang. And so... What do you mean by that? Just a higher volume of... Yeah, what was the experience yeah, out there? What What did you guys see? Yeah, um... <laughs> there was a lot that we saw there. Uh, experience there. Uh, going back to the different body of voices. Um, probably throughout the entire night, we could hear different uh, potential spirits communicating with us. From children, the older uh, males and females to uh, just hearing laughter out of nowhere, singing. Uh, we saw shadow figures. I saw an apparition, a full-bodied apparition. Um, yeah, it was uh, an intense night. Uh, we, we got lucky enough to do an overnight investigation, and we had the entire location to ourselves. It was a group of nine of us, but we had the whole property to investigate. For about eight minutes. Dang! And so at the end of these, um, you guys play. You, so you guys go in with with audio equipment, video equipment, and stuff. And do you guys just go yeah. back and, and replay all this? Yes. And then we we review all of our recorded data and see if we came up with anything visual or audio. Mm -hmm. And uh, currently, we're actually. Um, reporting our evidence will be at the Waverly Hill Sanatorium. So, in the next few days, we'll be revealing what we actually captured. Nice. That, that night. So. Um, where could we have access to it? Do you make it like public, or do you just keep it for your own records, or is there any way other yeah. people can can um, access it? Yes, all the evidence that we come across and find, we uh, we post publicly online. Uh, we have a YouTube channel, and you can look up Haunted Mario Paranormal Podcast, and um, that'll take you right to our, our channel. Oh, yeah. One more time, what was the name of that channel? It's uh, Haunted Mario Paranormal Podcast. Conference, okay. okay. Uh, do you think you could send us uh, a link to it through... Uh, through Facebook, and then we can just share that link on our on our social media. That way, people can get a look yeah. to see, like you know, secondhand yeah. what you guys sure. are are checking out. And so, with this, yep. I know this is do you, so. You consider it a hobby, or like, is there any way that you're looking into like potentially making money off of this, or what? What's the goal? Just to keep checking stuff out? It's a hobby, mm -hmm. it's a personal hobby between myself and my wife. Um, we have no intention on making any money off of it. Mm -hmm. We just simply do it because we enjoy exploring um, these locations, not just for the historical value. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot that we learned that we don't hear normal in the nature of these locations, but um, it, it helps us have an adventure it motivates us to go on definitely definitely uh so um in terms of up here what kind of places have you heard about or could you recommend to those that have the balls to go steel, on an adventure to go check that stuff out <laughs> well the uh probably the most famous haunted location in the bay area is alcatraz island mm-hmm uh, we haven't personally investigated that, um, and I know it's very difficult to get tourist tickets to visit that location. You have to order them months in advance. But uh, the best place that we've been to that actually haunted is the USS Hornet, and that's in Alameda. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've heard of that one before. Yeah. It's a World War II <laughs> aircraft carrier. 
Okay. And so, wh uh, what was the type of stuff you saw there or heard? Or... Yeah, about two years ago, we got the opportunity to do an overnight investigation at that location. And um, very similar to the uh, Waverly Hill Planetarium, we experienced uh, seeing shadow figures. I That's the only other place that I've seen a full-bodied apparition. Um, I actually... We were in the, the back of the ship in the anchor room, and in the darkness, I saw a, a full body apparition of a sailor in his white uniform walk from the right side of the room to the left side of the room. And I could see it through the darkness, and it actually happened on two separate occasions. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to capture it on video, but um, it's a personal experience I'll never forget from that. Jeez, no, I bet. Have, have any of these type of apparitions or experiences occurred closer to home? Mm, yes. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> so, there's sort of an uncool thing that happens when you go on an investigation with the general public is not into it doesn't know that there's a high potential of something following you. Thanks, and man. For uh, us, of something following you what? Home. Following really? you home. That's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, pepper spray won't help in these type of situations, no. right? <laughs> no. Um, but we've had that happen to us a handful of times. Um, each time it wasn't anything serious but it was kind of the corner of the eye thing that you see or you hear a strange noise in the house that is not common to what you're used to uh, things get misplaced when you know they were in one spot and they end up in another um, stuff like that so that's not real or it is real it is real oh see I knew it I wasn't misplacing my keys this whole time. <laughs> Dang. And the funny thing is, I started out as a skeptic. Um, and over time, it, there's just too much that I I can't be skeptical about everything. Mm -hmm. For sure. And what's been the response to like people you tell about? To, like, uh, they're like, oh, you know. He's nuts, or yeah, right, or what's been the general response? Do you feel like people are starting to open up to the possibilities? Because I know we're 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 taught basically in this culture to just believe in what we see and hear. Yeah, it's kind of a fifty-fifty. I think um, the majority of the populace that we come across is interested in it. About half of them are into it. And the other half just dismiss it. For sure. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day and uh, talking with us about this, since it's mm -hmm. uh, you know it's so close to Halloween, and we figured it'd be a nice topic to touch. Um, and thanks for sharing the link. We'll, we'll uh, share some of the the videos and whatnot on our social media. And yeah, thanks, man. It's good to hear from you. Okay. No problem. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, yeah, we'll send you links too, so maybe you can listen in the future. Uh, this is a podcast, so you'll be able to listen to this over again and whatnot uh, once it's cool. posted. Um, but again, thanks, and hopefully I see you soon, man. Yeah, man. Thank you for your time. Wow. Really appreciate all your stories, man. Thanks Keep doing lot, what Mario. you're doing, and and best of luck to you and your wife, man. And happy Halloween. Thanks yeah. so much. All right. Happy all right. Halloween. All right, all man. Right. Good talking to you. Take it easy. Take man. it easy, man. Yeah. Dang. Spending a night on a freaking like <laughs> World War Two ship yeah. and shit. I've heard about that one. We actually, when when I was still kicking it with my with my car buddies from when I was living in San Jose, we went there to there, but we didn't go on there because it was restricted. It was closed at that moment. But we took some pictures from outside, <clears throat> and yeah, it, it's just simply being on the docks, you know, looking at the ship. It's like eerie. Yeah, you bet. get this eerie feeling to yourself, and <clears throat> I've even before that I've always heard stuff about 
going there and stuff like that. So him saying it, you know, just further confirms of what what we've been I've thinking about. Always, you know, always thought about it. <laughs> yeah, that that's some interesting stuff, man. That like I like like I said, he's probably got some fat balls to be doing what he's doing. Hell yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, because I mean, there's random moments when I've like thought I've seen stuff. And yeah. It freaks me the fuck out, especially like when you're half asleep. Oh yeah. man. Oh man, I I that's the worst. I've had those moments where you're just like, did I just see that? And you're like, nah, I think I turned my head too quick, or I'm just seeing shit. I'm tired, or I'm just seeing what I want to see. But like he said, you know who knows? Even the whole misplacing thing, stuff like that. Like that makes you think, man. Because yeah, how many of those times <laughs> were you like, I was a hundred percent sure I just left this here. Now yeah. it's like somewhere where I would never imagine. And you're like, I'm under forty. This shit shouldn't be happening. Oh you know? yeah. <laughs> and